family it's the mobile home diva and in today's video we are going to rotisserie chicken i'm going to make some squash out of my garden and some homemade mashed potatoes so if you're interested in seeing this cook with me and any other videos concerning mobile home living go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time i upload a video now first things first we're going to take a whole chicken and we are going to clean her really well I'm looking for um, anything that shouldn't be there. Take the gizzards out the inside. Um, clean off any feathers. Just give the chicken a thorough cleaning. Nobody can tell you what that means in your household. Just make sure that you clean it to the best of your ability and to your liking. So we got the chicken clean. I feel comfortable with it. Now it's time to get it ready for the rotisserie. So this contraption actually comes with the rotisserie and you just stick it through the chicken. Once I do that, I like to tie it with the shrink string and also season it. Y'all know my favorite seasonings, onion powder, garlic powder, Creole seasoning, but I also add a little slap your mama for a little kick and some paprika for color. Now, one thing I didn't do on video, make sure you oil the chicken first. Just lightly oil it with some um, olive oil before you add the seasoning so it'll stick to it. Sometimes I have to tie the string more than once. I have to make sure that it's nice and tight so the wings and the legs don't flap around. Okay? After you've done that, uh... Really, I could have done it before, I just thought about it, before I tied the string. Put an onion on the inside. If you have a bell pepper, put an onion and a bell pepper on the inside. That'll get flavor from the inside of that puppy to the out. It really gives it a good kick. You can also do this if you're putting a turkey in the rotisserie or anything. So... I've added an onion to the inside. I'm going to tighten it just a little more so that onion doesn't fall out. I'm going to put the top on. Now, I've used this rotisserie for many years, so please excuse. It's so ugly, but it works so well. So, I'm seeing spots that don't have seasoning. Adding a little more seasoning to it, and then we'll get her in the rotisserie. all right now that we've got the chicken going let's go ahead and get ready for the potatoes we're doing homemade mashed potatoes, so we just need to peel the potatoes and cut them. Um, however big or small you like to cut yours is fine. I'm not here to tell you what you have to do, just showing you my process. 
you can tweak it and make it your own. So peel the potatoes. If you notice any um, indiscretions on it, just take a knife um, like I do and cut those little areas off. It doesn't mean the whole potato, something's wrong. I just like to get those spots off that don't look nice. And so as you can see, I have about four or five um, potatoes, just enough for you and your family. You may use less, you, you may use more, you may use a different kind of potato. It's really up to you how you do your mashed potatoes. Just make sure that you walk, clean them off, peel, and sometimes people will boil, I have, with the peel still on because you like the peel in the mashed potato. So that's all of that is up to you. Once you get them uh, peeled and cut to the size that you like, go ahead and put them in a pot. Now, instead of water, I'm going to tell you a secret for flavor, okay? Instead of water, go ahead and get your chicken broth. You're going to fill the uh, pot up to the top of the potatoes with chicken broth, and you, that is what you're going to boil those potatoes in, all right? Trust me, flavor. It's really, really good. Put your lid on and go ahead and put those on high. Um, and now you can move on to something else because they're gonna boil and boil and boil until they get soft and you'll know when it's time to start making mashed potatoes. So once I finished with that, I got my squash out of the refrigerator. These squash actually came out of our garden. Just gonna cut those up. Thickness is really, um, whatever your preference is. I know I say that a lot, but I'm serious, so serious. I'm not here to tell you what you should do. I know there are a lot of people that like to tell you when you're doing something wrong. We cook the way we cook, each of us. So you cut them up to the size that you like for your family. Make sure that you clean that squash off. Um, I can't say it enough. I, I know I say it with everything I do. Make sure you clean it, make sure you clean it. But things these days are cooked, especially when you buy them out of the store with pesticides and different stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you got them clean. Once you clean them and cut them, go ahead and cut up your onion, bell pepper, whatever you like to cook in your squash, and cut it up, put it in the pan with your seasonings. had some leftover bell frozen bell pepper and onion that I added and then I think I had a few in the bag that I went ahead and cut and added myself so I'm gonna cut those up they're getting soft I don't want to lose them I'm gonna go ahead and cut up those sweet bell peppers and add those as well after you put all the veggies in that you want to add to your squash if you do some people don't want um, onion and bell pepper or they prefer onion but not bell pepper it's really up to your flavor and what your family likes after you cut up all your veggies go ahead and add your seasoning okay I add a little chicken broth to mine instead of water. You don't need a lot. The squash is going to make water. But I added the rest of my chicken broth to it for flavor. We'll go ahead and add um, the squash to the pan as well. And uh, put that on me. On. I started on high. Once it gets to boiling, I cut it down to medium heat. 
uh, with the lid off and just let it cook down and it'd be so good. Mm, it was really good. Now that everything is cooking the way it should, let's go ahead and check those potatoes. I can see that they're soft enough, so we're going to move them over to the sink and get those mashed as well. Remember, we did cook them in chicken broth, but we're not going to keep. I, I, I left just the little chicken broth in the bottom, um, but we're going to mash those up to the desired softness. I like a few pieces still left, but this time I kind of mashed them up really good um, in the pot. There was just a little chicken broth to kind of wet it. I added a half a stick of butter, and I mashed that in as well. Just go ahead and mash it up as good as you like. Add as much butter as you want. You're going to add a little milk to it as well. So that's what I'm doing, going to get the milk. Add the milk, put your seasoning, salt, pepper, whatever you like, um, and that's it. Those potatoes are ready. If you know me, you already know the seasonings I use. Onion powder, garlic powder. This time I used a little salt pepper, half a stick of butter, just a little milk. Uh, and at the end I added some parsley for color. But that's it. These don't have to go back on the stove. They are ready to go. I'm just going to speed through this cornbread. You guys have seen me make it before. I use two cups of cornmeal, a cup and a third of milk, a quarter cup of um, oil. Beat that cornbread until it's smooth. Add it in your um, cast iron skillet and cook for 25 minutes. And now we come to the chicken. I always put my thermometer in to make sure it's done. It registered at 200 degrees, so it is ready to come out of the rotisserie. It's a fairly easy process to pull it out of the rotisserie. Um, you just get something that will allow you to handle it without burning your hands. Um, that one end comes apart and you just slide it off as you'll see me do in the video. Easy peasy, it looks good, it smells good, it looks kind of crisp on the outside, and trust me, it's juicy on the inside. This rotisserie is amazing. I wouldn't get a new one for anything in the world. It works so well, but that's it, you guys. Dinner is ready. I hope you have enjoyed watching me and this cook with me. Um, this was a good meal. It was actually through the week last week, and I forgot to post it, so I wanted to put it up and make sure you saw um, how everything turned out. The, the squash was good and tender, the potatoes were flavorful, and the chicken had a good flavor, and it was really, really juicy. What we had left over of that chicken that night, I actually made chicken salad, and we ate that for lunch the next day. So, so, so good. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cook with me. Gave you some ideas of a dinner that you like to make. 
and you have a good day. Thank you.